This is Jackie Helvey, and I'm here with Neris Levy. Hi, Neris. Hi, Jackie. So nice to see you in yes. a different setting. And yeah. It's usually been in WCOM and the Art Center, so here we are in my home. Yes, it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, you know, I miss the radio show, but I don't miss all the technical issues that I had there. So to be able to pop on my Kindle and come and talk to you is wonderful. Well, it's also, it gives you more flexibility. Yeah, it I sure know does. you were always busy on that Friday night throwing people out of the studio, basically, <laughs> before you could get on. That's exactly right. So here, it's a little more dignified for you. It to is. Yeah. Um, Naris, you're an artist and a community activist, and one of the things that you started was the uh, community dinner with Mildred Mama Dip Council, who yes. is no longer with us, yes. and uh, last year we had to call it off because of the pandemic, and yeah. I wanted to just briefly mention that it's not happening this year. It's either. not happening this year for obvious reasons, that until more people are vaccinated and the governor's directives are changed, and so the governor's directives, as we all know, and it's now March the 19th as we're recording this, still mean that we have to wear masks and we cannot have an assembly of more than 25 people. Right. And, and the so... community dinner usually has 700 people. Right. So we are planning it for April. Or May, hopefully April 2022. Boy, that we lost a year, didn't we? we two just... years, we will have lost two years. Yeah. We lost, we were ready to go last year on April the 28th, 2020. And then everything. And we had everything in place. Right. And all of a sudden, everything shut down. Yeah. And so we lost some funding then. Right. You know, uh, but uh, we're hoping that um, everything comes together. Uh, one different thing may be, you know, we were getting a lot of support from area restaurants and food suppliers. And we know that's going to be difficult next year because some have gone out of business exactly. and others will be, you know, just coming back. So I'm telling everybody out there who would like to donate or if you're a restaurant owner and can, Maybe by 2022, if you gave a little bit and we all gave a little bit more, the dinner will still be exactly the same. Right now. Well, Frank Gallery, you know, we have been weathering COVID pretty well because we opened up again in June last year. Oh, I didn't yes. realize yeah, that. Yeah. We opened up with, with uh, social distancing and masks, but we are, a lot of our, uh, we have a physical show we're open Tuesday through Saturday, at 12 till 5. But we can also be viewed by appointment. We also have, obviously, numerical restrictions on how many people enter the mm -hmm. gallery, masks, social distance. And our gallery manager, Natalie, is there mm -hmm. for, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. 12 till 5, but she can also meet people by appointment. Now tell me this, when will you start having uh, receptions again, do you we know? We have been having them online, oh. yes. Uh, in no, fact, I mean, in... in we are know. not sure yet. We, okay. are, we are going to, I think our first uh, foray into that will be our gala, which is on October the 9th. Oh, that'll be, yes. yeah. yeah. That'll Last be year we had... A, totally online mm -hmm. and this year it'll still be online but a little hybrid maybe a few people in the gallery but we're being very careful right uh, because you know we want to test how comfortable people feel yeah yeah and so there's no yeah. sense in being open if nobody's coming no but we <laughs> have yeah but we have a for every show, we have an online Zoom reception, which everybody can attend. Oh, that's nice. So we've been getting like 70, 80 people on that. Oh, good. And also, um, we are starting our coffee and donuts uh, event where people can just uh, sign in again and join us online for that event. Mm -hmm. um, now, tell me a little bit about you. I know you've been working with the students. Yes, so let's uh, talk yes. a little I bit about that. I actually run the uh, Karen, uh, Karen Youth Art Group. Uh, these are the uh, Burmese uh, refugee children uh, mm -hmm. of Burmese refugees who live in our community. We have a very big community of uh, Karens. And the, this is the Karen Youth Art Group. We have been running this. Frank is a non-profit uh, fine arts gallery. So we have 
a community aspect as well as uh, supporting the work of over a hundred artists. Wow. And so uh, basically um, you will come to the gallery and see a lot of different work as well as the members. You know, I'm one of the member artists. I'm in charge of art outreach. There are tw at the moment 22 of us mm -hmm. and we have a board, a member, membership and then in between we have these shows. So we sponsor you know, so we sponsor a lot of different artists in addition to the work of uh, Frank Gallery itself. Right. So um, the Karen Youth Art Group is uh, basically an outreach program, an educational program. And over the past eight years, we have actually worked with about 45 to 50 Karen students. Wow. But our groups are small at one thing at a time mm -hmm. because um, we are basically devoted to arts education but also furthering and supporting the education of the Karen students. Well, you have some fabulous students. I've yes. seen their work. Yes. Yes. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is your, uh, your efforts with the new Carver Library? Yes, yes, well, 203 South Greensboro, Carver is the it's site right. of the future, Yay! yes, future <laughs> southern branch of the Orange County Library. And this has been 34 years coming into fruition. And it's a building that is not only the library, thanks to the input of the town of Carver, and Orange County, it's going to be a multi-functional building. And it's going to have, wait for it, the southern branch of the Orange County <laughs> Library, which will be on the ground floor, mm -hmm. a virtual justice center. It's going to have a black box theater, which is a usable space for everybody in the building. It's going to have the Orange County Skill Center WCOM radio, and last but not least, a lot of uh, the offices of the town of Cobra uh, Recreation and Parks. And mm -hmm. you know, they have a lot of programming, so this building will be multifunctional. Well, um, and a lot yeah. of people don't realize that um, the top floor of Town Hall has been used for years to store. Yes. recreation yeah. and parks yes. materials yes. Yes. and it's not safe it's really on the floor <laughs> it's not strong enough and so for the first time you know people will have a very decent uh, it'll be a center and also the architects uh, for those of you who don't know a perkins and will formerly freelon of durham phil freelon mm -hmm. uh, he was the designer um, and a builder of the um, African American Museum in DC. They are now Perkins and Will, and it's a very deep bench of 13 architects based in Durham, and of course with our planning director, Trish McGuire, mm -hmm. and our mayor and council, and also our wonderful town manager, you know, we have been able to, through the participation of the county, our library staff um, and, and just you know, people yes, yes everybody got to come and yeah. you know um, when I first saw this site I thought oh, that's not going to be big enough yes. You're, how are you going to where are you going to put parking yes. where are you going to yeah. do this where are yeah. you going to yeah. but then I looked at the plans and said man this is perfect yeah. you know we've got you know this is the fifth library that the uh, the architects have designed, right. uh, but they, if they, as, as we said, if they can build in DC, they can build in Cobra. Right. You know, people have been worried how they would deal with Cobra. They've also had a huge community process, and I know some people may have certain reservations about the plan, but this plan has been, you know, we started planning in 2015 with these same architects. Right. They did our concept plan. Then yeah. they had to come back and, you know, apply again. And the town chose them yeah. because they had a deep bench and they had all sorts of solutions. And, and uh, it's beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Yes. I want to tell you something. Um, this occurred to me when, when I saw some folks that were, you know, complaining. Yeah. I think it's perfect, perfect yeah. location yeah. right yeah. downtown. Yeah. But uh, the funny thing is, I ran into our mutual friend, uh, the Honorable Jay Bryan, one day. Oh, oh yeah. 
and he and Wendy had sold their house, and yeah. I said, uh, where did y'all end up moving, Jay? Yeah. And he smiled, and he said, into a development that I voted against when I sat on the Carborough Board of Aldermen. <laughs> so that kind of, you know, time changes your perspective. Time changes your perspective, and you know, this place is on the main bus road from the high school. And uh, I well, know and you know they're getting ready to build that low-income housing yes, next to yes, me, I know, which yeah. it's right just a few blocks away. Right, so. and also a lot of my Karen kids uh, live in uh, those uh, apartments on 54. On 54 yeah. And I have been picking up uh, kids from there for the last eight years, destroyed my car for the shock absorbers because of all the Right, they can bumps. walk to this place yeah, or they ride can a bike. walk to this place. Yeah. And you know we have we have many many underserved communities in South Orange and Cobra, and they will be using this. The projection on the use of the library alone in one year when we open is 184 thousand patrons. Exactly, and you got to be ready for that. Yes. You know, and you can't plan yeah. for today. You got to yeah. plan yes. for tomorrow. And you know, we've all we had no idea when we started this. And you know, we the friends of the Cobra Library, and many of those have departed, as we know, and we should honor all their efforts, uh, you know, past and present friends. Right. And you know, we had always wanted it now, we had wanted it now, but can I say, waiting has made us uh, it'll be better. into a better facility. Right. And we have gone through every due process, we have gone through all this legally, through due process, we have listened to everybody, yep. and not everybody can be satisfied. Yeah. Oh well, the other good thing is they're going to be building a sidewalk on that road, yes, so people yes. will I be mean, able to walk. In to the it. end, um, Cobra will. At the moment, until this building is built, we are the largest town in North Carolina without a proper library. Well, we're going to change all that. We're going to change all that, <laughs> but it's also going to be a county facility and yeah. we mustn't actually, uh, you know, forget that without the input of the county and the town, we wouldn't have had this. So it's, it's actually two entities working together. And we're in a new era now in uh, the United States where we're talking about unity. Right. This building is a symbol of unity. Right. As is the community dinner. They are both symbols of unity and Cobra has always been for unity. Yeah. And so I would hope that all those people who have reservations about the two or three building will be first in line when we <laughs> cut the ribbon. They might not be first in line, but as I said to one of yeah. them, one day when you walk your grandchild yeah. through yeah. those doors, yeah. you yeah. will be singing a different tune. Yeah, singing a different tune, because we are there for everybody. And, uh, you know, we the friends, of, can I just say, getting a library built is not a popularity contest. Right. And uh, I've also said that if you want to be popular, stay in bed. <laughs> You know. Well, thank you so much, Neris, and thank you for all of your efforts because, you know, there are probably many people out there who don't know how, how doggedly you worked for well, this, and yeah, uh, well, I know that you've always been a driving force, and you're yeah. such a wonderful part well, of this community well, and making you. it a better well, place. Well, Jackie, having you around, you know, makes everybody work too. I think in Cobra, <laughs> I think in Cobra what we don't want our prima donnas we've always worked together yeah and we've never actually want to be singled out you know we've also got the community at heart first right and we are not there for the personal recognition right so you know but i'm going to thank you anyway well thank you so <laughs> thank you jackie for coming today and to the community see you at the community dinner see you at frank gallery and see you in two, at, in two years at 203 South Greensboro. These are all places where you can have a great time. Thank you. Thank you, Neris. I hope that's okay. <laughs>